so we're in the garage where we made the cushions. This is the table where we made the cushions. And this is the machine that I was using. It's a Singer Heavy Duty. I'm trying to find the model number. What is it? Where is it? Right there. 4411. Pretty basic machine, but it is considered heavy duty. Uh, and it got the job done, and it, it was, you know, did pretty well. All the needles and all that stuff are pretty lightweight. The thread's lightweight. But I'm new to sewing, but it's surprising how good of a seam or a joint or whatever you want to call it that it makes because it is a lot tougher than you would ever think. Even with this very basic Joann's fabric thread, I mean, it's pretty darn tough. Um, I never even did it use any of these features. I guess that's stitch length. I probably could have moved that out a bit. It's probably one of the reasons why it was so tough because the stitch length was very short. But anyways, um, it was apparent that to do the rest of the stuff that I wanted to do, that this wasn't going to work for everything. Because even on this fabric, which you can see, let me see, isn't very thick. This is basic fabric. Um, you know, it's not very thick, but when I got four like this, it would really bog down because that's not a walking foot. So, uh, I had to upgrade. So anyways, I'll show you the upgrade. So, here is the machine I got to replace it, which is a used Sailrite LSZ1. And it has the zigzag feature, which apparently is just for when you need things to stretch slightly. The zigzag um, dimension allows it to stretch if the material is stretchy. Uh, otherwise, most of the time you just use straight stitch, apparently. Um, but this is a little bit older version from 2010. Uh, I don't know what the difference is between the, the new ones. Probably not much. Um, so I got this used off of, where did we get it? On Facebook? Craigslist. Or Craigslist. Yeah, actually a guy on Craigslist who doesn't use the computer much. Uh, made sales. Uh, repaired sales. Made all kinds of stuff. Uh, and this was his second machine. This was the first machine he bought, but then he bought a professional machine. And then this was like his backup or if he had him and his wife were doing it at the same time. Um, it w runs perfect. Um, I got it all set up, but I'll show you the difference between this and that. And you can see the difference. You know, the, the machines themselves are almost the same size. But this one weighs about, I don't know, 15 pounds. And this one weighs about 35 pounds. Um, and you see the size of the wheel there and then it's also got this belt driven gear reduction and then this one has this little wheel right here so this one has a lot of torque you can go very very slow uh, and the features on this are pretty simple I'll just go over them real quick because I don't know if there's a video that just shows them apparently this is the reverse lever but also sets the stitch length so if you're all the way to the top, I believe, and I could be wrong about some of this, but this sets the longest stitch length so that the distance between each stitch. And then the farther you go down, I don't know how far you can go down, but then the stitch gets closer and closer. Um, and then reverse is all the way down. So right now I have some medium stitch length. I don't even really know. i got to read the manual. Um, this is uh, the zigzag, how much zigzag you want to put into it. Right now it's straight stitch all the way up at zero. If you put it all the way over, it just goes in a zigzag. Uh, this, I, don't, I haven't explored this feature yet. I think it, it does offset the, if you look at that, I believe, see how it offsets that needle? I think it's just some kind of offset if you're doing uh, certain things or certain seams or something. I'm not quite sure. Or yeah, this is the uh, lever that raises and lowers the foot. Um, I got, I got I think. And then uh, this is the tension knob. I think I got it. I don't know, it's hard to watch and do it at the same time. Um, and then this is the walking foot. So on this one, on the other one, let me get something to point with. On the other one, only this bottom serrated piece uh, walk back and forth to, to pull the fabric in. On this, the upper 
foot also moves and it's also serrated so it basically grabs between this and that clamps down on the fabric and pulls it back each time and the needle follows this upper foot so I believe that this needle moves every time the foot moves also so it's always pulling the fabric and the needles always in time with the pulling of the fabric and then it uh, makes a nice stitch so the guy I, this thing uh, wasn't cheap sale rights do hold their value so if you're questioning getting a Chinese knockoff or sale right I was just about to pull the trigger on a, a Chinese uh, version but there's a lot of mixed reviews on them they come and they don't operate right away and they need to be timed and then this and that and uh, some of the um, components maybe are not as good you would think they'd be identical but apparently you know sale right orders from China they can dictate what their quality control process is and then also apparently sale right goes through each machine as they get them before they're sold so this one came with the case it's got a big black case that goes over it he threw in this nice magnetic light which works really good I had to put a LED light because the light he had in there was super hot and then that's another thing is this one you can put the big rolls of thread up there and it goes to this machine on this one you just have those little little rolls they last quite a long time but not like this I mean obviously if you're a professional and you're working on this all day uh, you need something like this you can't be changing rolls of thread all the time and then, okay so we're just gonna show how this machine works the little singer and it's a uh, it's not a heavy-duty machine but it does do a good job especially on fabric like this if you're gonna make you know interior cushions or something um, and it'll sew this really good and it's a lot stronger than you might ever think but as soon as you go to like four layers of this fabric which this fabric isn't anything special um, it struggles to get through it and you really end up having to push it through so this is the foot right here this is a non walking foot so the only thing that moves is these little serrated teeth right here move back and forth to pull the fabric through but this smooth foot right here just kind of glides over the fabric so it doesn't pull very good um, and I'll just demonstrate it so really all you got to do is uh, get on the right thing on the back here there's this lever to lower the foot, push it down, and then basically you start sewing. Let me get on the thing here. If it's working. Yeah, it's working. And you can barely see the thread that's coming out the back, and it's a very close stitch. So on this, it's, uh, you can see that little foot lift up and down, but the foot itself doesn't move, only the under part, that serrated under part. Then we have a reverse lever right here, which is very convenient. So if you can get both of these in here. And I'll go, I'll go forward for a second, and then back, and then forward, and then back. And that's how you end the stitch to lock it down. It's very easy. And then, uh, so I use the hand wheel to pull it up, lift that up, pull this out. Always leave about four or five inches apparently under there and then you're ready to sew again and then you can see this is actually pretty darn strong you can barely see the thread and there's there is no way I could pull this apart it's pretty strong um, strong enough for most stuff especially when the stitch is very close together and the thread itself up here isn't very strong itself but when you put a bunch of it close together I mean this is a damn strong joint I was surprised learning how to sew how strong that actually was and for an interior cushion this machine will probably do it just fine so if you're just gonna if you're on a budget and you're going to uh, just make interior cushions for your boat or whatever you know obviously you can sew clothes and whatnot this definitely will do it um, and there's a couple times where you're at the corners where you're gonna have four layers and you just kind of got to push it through and it works just fine for like box cushions but Obviously. All right, so we're going to demonstrate the difference between the uh, regular non-walking foot that we just did versus the sailrite walking foot. So, watching the sailrite videos, I just watched the dang videos. I hit this lever up here, and then lower the walking foot. And let me find my... Uh, which one's which? This is this one right here. All right. I 
whatever. Pedal. Pedal. Okay, and then uh, then we sew. And you can see that. Watch this. Uh, watch this thing here. Watch the, this walking foot moves as opposed to the other one just kind of goes up and down. This one sounds like an industrial machine. And then here's the reverse lever. You can see it reverse. So then pulling the, the everything's heavy duty on this, so pulling the thread out, you want to get this lever all the way to the top. At least that's how I found to do it. Then pull this lever up. Releases the fabric, and then supposedly you're supposed to wiggle this wheel a little bit to get the fabric out. Um, my scissors. And then cut, leave yourself a little bit of thread. And then you can compare the joints. You can see this thread, because I'm using some of the thread that the guy gave me. Um, and so, you can actually see the thread in there, but this thread is a thousand times stronger than that other thread, so... Uh, I could tighten up the uh, the um, stitch length and make it more like this one. This is the one we did on the other one. Now this this thread matches this fabric a little closer, so you can't even hardly see the thread. If you looked real close, you would be able to see the thread in there. But there's a whole bunch more stitches per inch in this than there is in this, and I really don't know which one would be stronger. I believe this would probably almost not be stronger because I would bet that this fabric would give up uh, before before this one because uh, there's much more uh, threads per inch on this one but this is plenty strong for the fabric I mean if, if the fabric is giving way then it's plenty strong um, so yeah this is for like this is just a magnet so this whole this whole base on this one it's not magnetic only this little plates magnetic on this one the whole thing's magnetic so if you need to set a seam you know that you're trying to do you just put this magnetic guide up there and you guide it through like that usually more often than not it's right on the on the edge there um, so now I'm gonna sew through this with uh, so I told you this one struggled with four layers I'm not going to show you that because it struggles but uh, you really have to push it through with four layers. So we're going to do four layers, and then I'm just, I haven't done it before, but we're going to turn it over and do eight layers. So let's see what happens. Here. Okay. Hold up. So, I mean, four layers is like child's play, you know, has, and really this is where it begins to shine. Look at that. I mean, that thing ain't coming apart. Let's do eight layers. I think, I think probably as long as you can get it to feed that it's going to do it. Let me cut this extra thread off. We're going to, we're going to sew this thing right in half. Let's see what happens. I've never done this before in this machine. I just got it. I mean, it just pulls it right through. You don't even need to touch it. It does, it does everything you need to do. Let me go reverse a little bit. Now, also, if you notice, I can really go slow. Which the other one would never be able to do. So, let me pull this up. And this is, again, this is where this thing really shines. Like if you're sewing it, stacks of fabric together, I mean, this thing is never coming apart. I don't think I'm going to go for that much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if try. It, I don't think I can even, I think if you can get it under there, it'll sew it. That's probably too much. Yeah. That would be 16 <laughs> layers. So, yeah. but, but I mean, this is just much, much better. Tough as nails. This, to do it on this machine here, never happened. Not even close. And of course you can then do canvas and all kinds of stuff 
on this machine here, which we plan to do. So this is the new toy and we will make some more videos, some of our future projects, which includes the uh, window covers that go on the outside with snaps. We'll use the snap machine that he gave us. We'll make window covers and then uh, we will make, we are going to make a, an aft canopy on our trawler <clears throat> and we're going to use we're going to use the welder over there see that welder see the, can you get the welder see the welder the Millermatic uh, 211 auto set and I've got a spool gun and uh, we're going to weld aluminum tubes and base plates and different things to make an aft canopy set up but in the aft canopy the, the most aft supports will also have some heavy duty aluminum and a hook with a block and tackle so that we can use it to hoist up the uh, whatever, hoist up the, the dinghy, but also uh, hoist up a, a swimmer, you know, with if you have the life sling or something like that. Because I've seen these little hoists, <clears throat> and they're supposed to support up to 200 pounds, uh, and we had a chance to see one. Remember that guy installed one on his trawler? It was pretty damn flimsy. I certainly wouldn't trust it in an emergency. So I want to make something on the aft of our boat that not only supports our canopy, supports uh, our, our anchor light and possibly other things, but uh, can do some work. So <clears throat> that's just one of the projects we'll do in the future, and we'll make sure we document it. We've got lots of uh, lots of projects. <laughs> okay.